Hello everyone. I'm glad to see you on my channel. The story I'm going to tell you today is pure. It is true that all the bad things that happen in life happen for a reason. It is said that we can appreciate the good things, the things when they happen to us. I hope you enjoy this story. I wish you a pleasant viewing experience. The work day was in full swing when the phone in John's office started ringing with a long trill. John, come to the director, he heard the voice of the secretary. What's wrong, Catherine? The man asked. What's the chief calling for? I do not know, replied the girl, just asked to come in. In the company where John worked, there was a personnel reshuffle. In place of the old director, who left his post for health reasons, came the former first deputy. Frankly speaking, with John he had a strained relationship. He could have applied for the job himself. He'd have worked in the company for almost 10 years, knew all the nuances and did his job well. But the former director recommended this pompous terpy Sergi to the founders of the company. What could he possibly want with John today? He'd be nagging again. With these thoughts, the man walked down the corridor, greeting colleagues who came across him. Ekaterina was sitting at the computer in the reception area. The secretary was concentrating on typing something. Is he alone? John asked. No, you can come in, the girl replied. John opened the door. The director was sitting in his chair. Three police officers were seated on chairs behind the desk. Come in, John, invited the chief. The police officers rose from their seats. John? One of them asked. Yes. What's going on? The man expected anything. A nagging from his superiors to Pucka forfeiting his bonus, even dismissal, but he didn't expect to see police officers in the principal's office. You're charged with intentional injury to a person, causing the victim to lose capacity. You are under arrest and must come with us to the police station. There must be some mistake. John started to resist, but he was already handcuffed. One of the employees took him out of the office, the others followed him. In her final year at the Institute, Selena met Harry. One evening she and her friends were walking in the park. Nearby in the parking lot stopped a car from which loud music was coming. A tall young man flew up to Selena, grabbed her in his arms and laughed merrily. Selena, how glad I am to see you. It was her former classmate, with whom the girl had not seen for a long time. It was said that he went to study in the capital and left his hometown. Jacob. What a meeting, Selena wondered. How are you here? They said you'd left. I'm writing my thesis, a guy answered, putting Galia on the ground. At home is calmer and more comfortable. Again, my sister helps. I see. I see how you are calm here, laughed the girl. You haven't changed a bit, Jacob said, smiling, still as pretty as ever, with the imprint of deep intelligence on her face. Jacob flicked her nose. Oh, you and your jokes, Selena waved him off. Selena, take your friends and come with us, suggested a former classmate. We'll sit in a tight circle in a pleasant company. What do you think about it? The girl hesitated. It's late. And although her parents had long since stopped scolding her if Selena stayed overnight at her friend's house or came home at midnight, there were still doubts. Who's in there with you? She nodded at Jacob's car. My best friends, the boy said with a smart Alec thumbs up. You're with your friends. Come on, you won't regret it. We'll stop at the supermarket and get everything you want. Selena approached the girls, told them about her former classmate's proposal. Her friends were hesitant. We don't know them, Lucy said, glancing toward Jacob, who was chatting with the guys in the car. Oleska's a normal guy, Selena assured her. We've been studying together since first grade, and he used to cheat off me all the time, and he used to carry my briefcase home for me. What's there to be afraid of? I'm definitely not going, refused Leslie. I think I'll go, said Lucy. The girls said goodbye and went to the car where Jacob was waiting for them. Well, we're ready to spend the evening with you. I promise me it will be fun and we won't regret our decision, Selena said, smiling. Absolutely, you won't regret it, he assured her. The girls jumped into the car, Lucy having to sit on some guy's lap. Jacob turned toward the back seat. Meet the girls, he said. This is Harvey, and this is Harry. We've all lived in the same neighborhood since we were kids, and then we moved away. We met today, and it's a good excuse to get a little wild. The boys laughed, and the girls joined in with a giggle. Jacob stopped the car at the supermarket. The guys went into the store, and the girls were left alone. I'll put some music on so you don't get bored, Jacob said. The mood was good. 
The girls were squirming in the backseat, excited about the unexpected adventure. Which one do you like best? Lucy asked Selena. How can you tell in the dark? She laughed. All seem to be normal, not swearing, not rude behave. Now they'll buy us some goodies. I'm already hungry, a sausage sandwich would be nice. I like Harvey. So you didn't even see his face, it was dark in the car, and the windows were tinted, so even the light of street lamps didn't penetrate into the cabin. So what, I was sitting on his lap, my friend objected, you can feel at once, gallant gentleman did not even try to touch. Well, if he is, Selena said, she suspected that Jacob had invited them to spend the night together for a reason. Ever since high school, the guy had been paying Selena attention, he was always trying to stay within her line of sight. In gym class, he'd gone out of his way to do the best pull-ups, run the fastest distance, and break the boys' records in push-ups. They had a good friendship. Selena did not refuse his friendship, the guy is handsome kind from good family. And now here she was on her way to visit in with his friends, and they hadn't seen each other in almost five years. The guys loaded the shopping bags in the trunk, settled in the car. Let's go to the best party ever, Jacob shouted cheerfully. At breakneck speed, laughing to the happy music, they drove into Jacob's yard and up to the fourth floor. A coffee table was placed in the middle of the room, and chairs and stools were placed around it. Get in the kitchen, girls, unpack the bags and put everything on the table, Jacob ordered. Selena and Lucy sliced the sausage and cheese, opened some canned goods, and sliced the bread. After they'd filled the coffee table with appetizers, they joined the guys, who had already uncorked bottles of wine. The company was indeed excellent. The friends were not bored. Harvey knew so many jokes that they never seemed to stop laughing. Their stomachs were already aching with laughter. Harry was more quiet, but was also cheering his friends on. I want cod liver sandwiches, Harry said suddenly. Selena, come with me down to the nightstand. Maybe they have some. Let's go, agreed the girl. Don't lose it. Selena's parents noticed a change in their daughter's behavior. She stopped going out with her friends, almost never went out. All the time she sat in her room, on the table lay open notes, and the tape recorder played music. It was Harry's favorite singer. Selena didn't listen to any other songs now, only these. They reminded her of happy days with her boyfriend, who was now far, far away. Would he remember her as often as she remembered him? Selena opened the atlas and looked up the name of the garrison where Harry lived and served. It was very far from their town almost on the border with Norway on the shores of the Barents Sea. Daughter, you should go for a walk, Mom said. How long can you stay at home? It's springtime, the weather is wonderful, and you're still with your notebooks. I don't want to mammy, answered Selena. She rejoiced at every letter from her beloved and immediately sat down to write a reply. Cell phones were rare then. Selena didn't have that luxury. Harry sometimes called her home phone, telling her about the service, asking about her affairs at the Institute. The calls were infrequent, Selena realized that the guy would probably get huge bills for long-distance calls. After the diploma defense, she and her classmates went to celebrate this important event. They walked until late at night in a small cafe on the waterfront. When Selena got home, her mother said in a whisper so as not to wake her father, You've had a long-distance guy call you several times, asking when you'll be back. Oh, that's a shame, it's Harry, Mom, Selena got upset. I figured as much, her mother replied. I told him to call tomorrow. I told him you were celebrating the defense of your diploma with friends. And he wasn't offended. The girl was worried. No, he said goodbye politely and said he'd call back. But Harry didn't call back tomorrow or the day after. When the phone rang two weeks later, Selena ran to the phone. Hello, she said into the receiver, holding her breath. I can't be without you, said a painfully familiar voice. Come and live with me. Selena was overjoyed. At dinner she told her father and mother that she loved the submariner sailor, that he was calling her to come and live with him, that she wanted to go. At night Selena did not sleep. She kept tossing and turning in bed and heard her mother and father whispering quietly in their bedroom. The news that their daughter wanted to go to some guy they didn't know seemed unreasonable to her parents. That's not how it works. You have to get to know him, his parents, get to know him better. But knowing Selena's character, they realized that to keep their daughter would mean ruining their relationship with her, and they loved their only girl. At breakfast this morning, her father was the first to start the difficult conversation. Daughter, my mother and I consulted, thought about it and decided to go. Whether or not your personal life will work out, it's hard for us to judge now. You'll see the world, 
how people live in completely different conditions. Just try to be reasonable and be sure to call and write to us. Her father seemed calm, but Selena knew he had a lot on his mind. We'll give you money for the tickets, and we'll also give you money for the first time and for the return ticket. Don't spend it, you don't have to. Things happen in life. That way you will always have a chance to buy a ticket home. When Selena returned from the train station with the ticket in her hands, she twirled around the room in anticipation of the meeting. Then she spent the whole evening packing her suitcase. There was no way it would fit. Even though it was summer, she had to take a jacket and warm boots. Because it was the North. They say it's only summer for two weeks. Selena's mother baked pies and fried chicken for her daughter's journey. It was a long journey, three whole days by train. The phone rang. It was Harry. I'm leaving for you tomorrow, Selena told the boy excitedly. I will definitely meet you at the train station, Harry promised. The next day, her mother and father put Selena on the train. They weren't sure if they had done the right thing in letting their daughter go to the ends of the earth to a guy they didn't know. But she is already an adult, behind the shoulders of the institute and received in the educational institution specialty of economist. With this profession she will not be lost, Selena's parents thought. The train started. She waved at them from the window. There were three young men in the parlor with Selena. She got the bottom shelf. The girl sat down and looked thoughtfully out the window. Only three more days and she would see Harry. In her life she had never had such strong feelings for this guy. They'd only been out for a week, and then he'd left, leaving her with her dreams of seeing him again. Let's get acquainted, said the guy from the top shelf, hanging his head down and turning to Selena. My name is Frederick. And I'm Selena, smiled kindly at the girl. Her eyes shone with happiness. And where are you going, Selena? Asked the guy. Selena said the name of the garrison. She remembered it very clearly. So many times during this time she had written it on the envelopes with Harry's letters. Frederick suddenly got off his seat and sat down next to the girl. Really? He asked in surprise. I'm going there too, coming back from vacation. So you're a military man? Selena asked, interest in her eyes. It turned out that her traveling companion lived in the same distant garrison where her Harry lived. Yeah, I'm on a submarine. Who are you going to see, if it's no secret? Maybe I know. Selena said her first and last name, and the guy laughed. Of course I know you're Harry. We live in neighboring entrances, we serve in the same unit. Selena was happy, as if she had met a dear close person. They talked a lot, went out together at the stations for a walk, to get fresh air, to buy a water. Frederick told the girl a lot about the life of the military. Do girls often come to stay with their boyfriends? She asked. They often come, but most of them go back to their moms and dads after a month. Why? Selena didn't understand. Does love pass so quickly? Love may not pass, but it's hard to live in the garrison, no conditions. Imagine, a lieutenant graduated from a military institute in New York and was assigned to the far north. Elise, kissing his fiancée on the platform, promising that as soon as he gets settled, he will call her to him. And so he does. After some time she arrives, and there are no discos, no clubs, no entertainment. There is only one store with almost no products. The salary is small, the life is meager, and it's cold all the time. So what if you love? All this is not a hindrance. Frederick laughed. Let's see how long it takes you to go home. I won't, not unless I'm going on vacation with the one I love. Yes, let me tell you a funny, but very instructive story. A friend of mine at the institute was assigned to a military unit on an island. A few months later, his fiancé came to him. How he discouraged her, saying that it was not time yet, he had not settled down. But she just kept coming. She collected whole boxes of books, even a small TV set, and two suitcases full of clothes. A girl born from a decent, very poor family, spoiled by her parents. My buddy met her from the train, we started to get to the place of service with all her huge stuff, boxes, suitcases, and a TV set. At first we shook in a military truck for a long time, and then sailed on a boat to the island. We arrive at the shore in the dark. There was no light, it is a normal phenomenon here. We barely reached the house with flashlights, where the lieutenant was staying, and collapsed to sleep from fatigue. And in the morning my friend did not find his bride, but there was a note on the table. Gone to the market to get some food for breakfast. He clutched his head. What market? There wasn't even a store on the island. The groceries were brought in on certain days. When the bride returned, she packed her bags and headed back to New York. That's it. 
and you all think that life in a military garrison is romantic. Outside the window, the scenery was changing. The birch trees were replaced by scanty growth on the hills. There were almost no settlements. Occasionally there were small settlements with three or four wooden barracks. Celine gazed in wonder at the tops of the hills, covered in snow. She had never seen such a miracle in June. Frederick and Selina were the last to get out of the carriage. As they approached the city, the boy advised Selima to change her sandals for boots and put on a jacket. The saying, it's not me here like anywhere else, he said. They stood on the platform, but Harry was nowhere to be seen. Strangers with suitcases and large bags were rushing past. Selina kept looking through the crowd. Suddenly she saw two boys running down the platform. One of them was Harry. He put his arm around her and kissed her on the lips, shook Frederick's hand. Meet Selina, said Harry in a panting voice. This is Archie, a friend of mine. They got into the car and drove for about an hour on a winding road between hills and lakes. At a checkpoint the car stopped. A uniformed man approached, introduced himself and asked, Your papers. Harry held out some kind of ID and a piece of paper with printed text on it. The military man looked into the cabin, glanced at the passengers. Hello, he said to Cellini and handed the papers back to Harry. As the car started, passing through the raised barrier, Celine asked, Do you need a pass to get out of here too? Of course, Harry replied. They drove up to a five-story paneled house and went up to the third floor. The apartment was perfectly clean. The large kitchen had a couch besides the stove and table. This is where Archie sleeps, Harry said. We live together. The prospect of living in the same apartment with a guy she didn't know didn't faze Selina. And this will be our room, Harry showed her. There was nothing else in it besides curtains and a couch. Nothing will get everything in time, Selina thought as she looked around. Her lover was there for her, and she was happy about that. The guys started setting the table. Selina rushed to help them, but Harry suggested, You go take a shower, get some rest, we'll manage here ourselves. When Selina came out of the bathroom, it wasn't just Harry and Archie in the kitchen. Other co-workers had gathered as well. All evening they feasted, played guitar and sang songs. It was fun. In honor of his fiancé's arrival, which Harry had informed the commander about, he was given two days off. During these days they walked around, the guy showed and told the girl everything. Now she knew where to go for groceries if something is needed, on what road men go to the military unit where the House of Officers is located, where the festive events and concerts are held. In November they were married. All of Harry's savings were spent on the wedding, and even had to borrow from co-workers. The ceremony was held in the village ZAGS. The wife of one of Harry's friends gave Selina his wedding dress, and the veil they bought a very beautiful at the market in the city. The table was set right in the apartment that the command had allocated to the new young couple. The guests ate, drank, joyfully shouted bitter, and when they left, Salima and Harry unfolded the mattresses on the floor and made up the new linens that had been given as a wedding gift. There was no bed in their new apartment. In December, when the entire crew went on vacation, Harry and Selena didn't go to their hometown. The vacation money had gone to pay off their wedding debts, so they stayed in garrison and enjoyed each other. After New Year's Eve, Selena realized they were having a baby. She called her mom, but was in no hurry to share the news. Her mother asked her, Selena, are you pregnant by any chance? Ma, how did you know? A mother's heart feels everything. When you become a mother, then you'll understand. Harry's joy was unbounded. He cheered like a boy, all the time talking about the baby, and when it was time to give birth, took his wife to the maternity hospital by cab 70 kilometers away. There was no maternity hospital in the garrison. It was not safe to give birth in a military hospital where there was no obstetric department. Therefore, a few days before the birth, Selina found herself in the city maternity hospital. She gave birth to a baby boy, the child, as two drops of water resembled in Harry. At the discharge, her husband arrived with flowers and gifts for doctors and nurses. He solemnly accepted the son wrapped in a blue blanket with a lace corner from the hands of the midwife. Good health to you and the baby, she wished, accepting a cake, flowers and a bag of gifts from the man's hands. At home, the crib, which Harry had bought in Selina's absence from a hand-me-down ad, was already ready. They put the baby down and sat side by side, admiring the boy sucking sweetly on a pacifier. Let's call him Anthony, Selina suggested. What? I think Anthony sounds very cool, just like, laughed the young father. Harry left for the service every morning, 
Selena looked out the window at him. There were other military men walking through the streets at a brisk pace. After seeing her husband off, Selena went about her domestic chores. Anthony was very restless. She did not get enough sleep, and in the afternoon, when the baby was asleep, she did the laundry. She was very tired alone with the baby. When Harry came from the service, he helped her, took care of Anthony, played with him, and they also went for walks together. Walked, so happy young parents with a stroller, smiled at acquaintances, said hello, interchanged the usual greeting phrases. It was especially hard for Selena in winter. On the unclear roads of the garrison it was impossible to pass, not to pass. She could hardly push the stroller with sleeping Anthony towards the square, where there were market stalls, but she still had to go out for groceries. In the evening, when Harry came home from the service, everything was closed, so she dragged the stroller and then her bag of vegetables and milk. Once again they did not go to their hometown for another vacation. Harry decided to spend the vacation money on a washing machine and upholstered furniture. They went to the city and bought a vacuum cleaner at the same time. Often on weekends, Harry's co-workers came to visit them. They brought ration meat and Selena fried beliashi. When Anthony's teeth began to come in, Selena lost her peace. Sometimes, not knowing how to calm the child, she locked herself in the kitchen. She'll get through it and calm down, she thought, and then her conscience tormented her. What a heartless mother she was, her child was in pain, and she plugged her ears so she couldn't hear him. Selena rushed to her son, rocking him in her arms over and over again, winding miles around the apartment. Harry's son's screaming was infuriating. Calm him down, why is he yelling? He hasn't let you sleep all night, and here you come tired from work, and he still hasn't calmed down. He's just in pain, he's teething. Selena, all babies are teething. My mom said I never cried, I was very calm, I had no problems. That he can't stand it. And imagine if you have all your teeth at once sick. Can you tolerate such pain? Selena persuaded her husband. So he has nothing to hurt there. Harry did not want to understand anything. Selena occasionally sent photos to her parents, so they could at least look at their grandson. Her mother wrote letters in response. In another message she wrote, God, my daughter, you look bad, you look very thin. There are only eyes on your face. And where are your cheeks? You must be very tired. We've decided that your father will come to help you. Harry, daddy's coming to see us, she told her husband that night. Why? To help with Anthony. I'm having a hard time on my own with the baby. I can't even eat properly, let alone sleep. The prospect of living with his father-in-law didn't appeal to Harry, but he agreed. On the appointed day, he met Selena's father from the train and brought him to their home. Victor brought two huge bags of goodies. There were jars of pickles and jam, pies, and various suits and sweaters for Misha. And this is for you, the man held out an envelope to Harry. We weren't at the wedding, we didn't give gifts, and these are from all our relatives. There was money in the envelope, a decent amount. Selena, explained Harry, now we can buy a TV. Get ready tomorrow, we'll take a cab and go into town. Don't you have a TV? Victor was surprised. You must go, how can I live without my favorite shows? They laughed merrily, and Anthony, who was sitting in the high chair smiled too. In the evening they had a celebratory dinner. Harry was just about to receive his rations. Selena happily unloaded meat, butter, eggs, powdered milk, plum compote in a large tin can, freshly frozen fish, flour, and other foods from the bags. We're living. Harry rubbed his hands together contentedly, and it's good that this month's paycheck wasn't delayed. Rations as well as wages were paid irregularly. But Selena got used to it and learned to cook normal, even quite tasty food from a minimum of ingredients. All products were saved. When Victor grated a whole carrot into the borscht, Harry was indignant. Are you out of your mind? Do you know how much vegetables cost here in the North? Selena divides carrots into several parts, for soup and for the second. Selena's father was a little offended. He loved to cook, he made very tasty soups, but it was impossible to make a tasty dish, saving on food. That's what he thought. Harry had other reasons to grumble at his father-in-law. For example, he didn't like the fact that Selena's father occupied the television in the evenings, watching programs and laughing loudly. Harry finally freaked out when he came home and found his father-in-law in the bathroom. Victor was doing laundry. Oh, hi, Harry, he said, catching sight of his son-in-law through the open door. The man wrung out the laundry over the tub. Harry saw that he was holding his underwear. Harry sniffled resentfully in bed. 
Did your father come here to wash my underpants? What are you exaggerating? Dad wanted to help me. He saw the dirty laundry piling up and decided to do it. I don't want a stranger washing my underwear, Harry continued to grumble. Well, don't be mad, Selena soothed him, trying to kiss him, but her husband turned his back to the wall. The next day Selena left for the officer's house. She and the other wives were preparing for the March 8th celebration, rehearsing a song for a performance. When she returned, her father was not in the apartment. Harry was sitting in an armchair watching television. Where's dad? Selena asked. Did he go for a walk? On the train, probably, answered her husband. What do you mean on the train? The girl didn't understand. In the usual way, Harry pressed a button on the remote control and the TV screen went out. I took him to the train station, bought a ticket home, and put him on the train. But why? Why did you do that to my dad? Selena exclaimed. Because I married you, not your parents. I want to live with you, not with them. I don't feel comfortable having someone else living in my apartment besides Anthony and me. Selena sank down on the couch, covering her face with her hands. She was very hurt and bitter. Tears were streaming from her eyes. The man she loved had just thrown her father out of their home. It was cruel, unfair, inhumane, in the end. Harry wouldn't even let her say goodbye to her father. And how is he going to go three days without food on the train? He probably didn't pack his dad anything for the journey. And anyway, since your father arrived, you've been doing a lot of things. Sleeping during the day instead of cooking or shopping. Then, like today, you disappear somewhere. You know exactly where I've been, Selena said, swallowing a lump in her throat. I'm not following you, Harry snapped at her, and there's no need to cry. Everyone's wives have time for everything and don't call their parents over. This was their first major fight. Selena still felt resentful of her husband for a long time, but tried to calm down and accept the situation. That summer they were going on vacation to their hometown. Harry's contract was expiring. He was supposed to take a vacation before signing a new contract. Selena's parents were looking forward to visiting their grandson. Anthony had grown up and was already thinking boldly. Is grandma old? Why old Anthony? Convinced him Selena. Not old at all. She will take you to the swings and the merry-go-round in the park. And grandpa has a stick to walk? Anthony persisted. Grandpa walks fine without a stick, son, Selena said. They'll play soccer with you and race you. Anthony couldn't sit still on the train. He went to visit in neighboring compartments, got acquainted with the passengers. Everyone liked the charming boy. He invariably returned to his compartment with sweets and cookies, which he was given by neighbors. Selena immediately put a condition that they would live on vacation at her parents. She did not want to be in close contact with her mother-in-law. Go to visit her once another time, get acquainted with her grandson, but I will not live with her. She is a stranger to me, she said to her husband. You can, in general, I do not take me to visit her, I will not be upset. Mother-in-law disliked Selena, even without having time to get acquainted with her. The bossy woman was used to deciding everything for her son. At least she tried to. She was resentful of her daughter-in-law for the fact that she and Harry were not like people. No introduction to her parents, no matchmaking, she complained to a neighbor. Took, packed up, went to my son, Huchu Hutala. I'll do anything to make him leave her. I have a good girl works in the shop, so let her look at her. Selena didn't care. She's legally married, and they have a charming little boy growing up. Let the mother-in-law say anything with her tongue if she has no bones. Selena has her own parents, and they always support her, and Harry was accepted as a native, although, as it turned out, he is not an ideal husband. During her life in the garrison, the girl made acquaintances and became friends with other wives. Often they went to visit each other, and then Selena learned not the most pleasant details about the life and behavior of her husband. He had a woman here before you came, a cook from the cafe, so he with her all the time rocked, said her friend. And the other day I saw her standing in the square with him, and she jumped on his neck, and he didn't even move to push her away. So he's always stopping by the cooks in the galley, my husband told me, said the other. Whenever my berry comes in, your Harry's there, making nice with him. Selena tried to ignore the gossip of her friends. What should a man do now? Become mute and blind. Don't socialize with anyone at all. But some powerful worm stuck in her head, all the time whispered, what if he's cheating? She calmed herself, here they will come home, have a rest, in the river will swim and the nature will go to the countryside with the whole family, and everything will be fine. But fate ordered otherwise. 
One day on TV news showed their military unit. On the submarine on which Harry served, there was a terrible fire, several people died. The husband withdrew into himself, severely experienced the death of fellow soldiers. Waking up at night, Selena saw that Harry was awake, lying and looking at the ceiling. She stroked his shoulder, tried to reassure him. Don't take it so hard, Selena said. Every man has his own destiny. If you were away from the tragedy at that time, it means that God is protecting you. It means that nothing bad will happen to you. You don't understand, the husband replied. Guys died there, with whom I served, with whom I was in autonomy, for three months in this iron. We saw the sky only through the periscope. That's more than co-workers. All crew members are like one big family, and there is no one closer. It was Harry's mother who stirred things up. She kept urging him to quit the service, go back to his hometown and work at the factory. You'll die in a tin can like your friends. Look, the whole country's mourning them, and the mothers. They couldn't even bury their sons properly. They buried them in closed coffins. They only have to imagine that they put the body in that coffin, or the remains in pieces. Harry wrinkled his nose at his mother's words and walked away. But two weeks later, when Selena was starting to pack for the return trip, he said, I'm not renewing the contract, we're staying here. Why? She asked, looking at her husband with a worried look. I don't want to serve anymore, I want to live like all normal people. Let's leave Anthony with your parents and go to the garrison. I'll do all the paperwork, you pack your things, you pack everything. We'll have to order two containers to get the furniture and all the big stuff on the railroad. I'm entitled to free transportation. Selena sighed. Well, if such a decision was made, then they will live in their hometown. She would always find a job here with her economics degree. And maybe it's even for the best. When all matters in the military unit were settled, the husband and wife returned to their hometown. They rented an apartment. Selena quickly got a job in a company her father tried, using his old connections. The firm was young, growing very quickly, and Selena saw the prospects. Maybe in a few years she would be the CFO. Harry, as his mother wanted, got a job at the factory. The couple rented an apartment, put Anthony in kindergarten. Not six months later, Harry left her for another woman. The same woman his mother-in-law had picked out for him. They met in court to finalize the divorce. The judge looked at the papers, hesitated a moment, then said, You have a minor child, so I must give you time to think about it. No, Harry and Selena shouted out at the same time. The judge looked closely at the divorcing couple. Well, since you're so adamant, I'll go along with it. Harry and Selena were divorced. The court ordered alimony. Selena was saved from depression by work, socializing with coworkers. Raising a child alone was hard. Anthony did not obey, capricious, hooligan. When Selena came to the kindergarten after work to pick him up, the boy's overalls were dirty. Why don't you look after him? She reproached the teacher, taking her son from the playground. All the children leave clean, but mine is like a piglet. What can I do, Selena? All the kids walk on their feet, but yours is always crawling on his belly. I said he doesn't obey, the teacher justified herself. You should be more strict with him. He is a boy, he can be punished. Selena brought her son home, undressed him and started washing his clothes first thing. She had to get his jacket and pants dry by morning. Money was always in short supply too. One day Selena was looking pensively out the window, sitting at her workplace. John, the firm's second deputy director, noticed her sad expression. Is something wrong, Selena? He asked her sympathetically. Not that she was friends with John, he kept to himself, not getting close to anyone. Everyone considered the man a careerist, he was not interested in anything but work, new deals, fulfillment of the plan and submission of reports. That's why the address Selena surprised the girl. No, personal, a little trouble, she replied. Maybe share, suggested the boss. I have nothing to pay for the daycare center, unexpectedly for herself, answered Selena. No money at all. So let me lend it to you, John suggested. No, thanks, Selena refused. She should solve her own problems, not blame them on other people. But what to do, she didn't know. She'd already borrowed from her parents twice this month, she didn't feel comfortable asking again. Her mom was already sick, and it took a lot of money for medicine. An hour later John reappeared in the planning department. He walked over to Selena's desk and held out a paper. Here, the man said, this is for you. What is it? Selena asked without looking at the document. It's financial aid, you've been working for a year, but you haven't received any financial aid yet, and we can do that, 
The boss explained. If an employee needs, once a year he can write out material aid. So go to the accounting department, get the money. Pay for the garden, let your son go in peace, and you do not worry about anything. Thank you very much, the girl said confusedly. It's not for nothing, if it's entitled, then it's entitled. Though, before the accounting office closed, the unexpected financial aid helped Selena a lot. Given in the amount of three months' wages, it was a real lifesaver. Selena not only paid for the kindergarten, but was also able to buy Anthony new shoes. The old ones were completely ruined. She had already taken them to her grandfather several times to blue the soles. John often came to the planning department where Selena worked. Colleagues whispered, Our second deputy Selena has a crutch on you. You'll start courting you. Come on, the girl waved away. She didn't want any new relationships at all. Harry's betrayal had hurt her. Why, the colleagues did not stop. He's a good-looking man, single. They say he had a wife once, but they divorced quickly. What was required to prove to? Probably got himself a new girlfriend, and his wife could not stand it and filed for divorce. Good thing he didn't have children. Children suffer the most when parents split up, Selena thought to herself. Anthony was worried about his dad not coming to them and not taking him back to his house. His temper was getting worse by the day. Selena was finding it harder and harder to cope with the boy. Mickey has a water pistol. Anthony whined. I want one too. I'll get the money at work and buy you a water pistol just like Mickey's. Selena tried to calm him down. I don't want it later. I want it now today. The boy stomped his feet. Let's go to the store to get a gun. When Anthony got a water gun, a new toy was needed. Evan has a remote control car, he brings it to daycare and won't let anyone play with it, the boy wouldn't stop. I had to order a remote control car for grandpa's birthday. But by that time Anthony had already burned out and was disappointed with the gift. I thought you would get me a scooter, I've been dreaming about it for so long, he reproached his grandparents, who gave him the gift. However, Anthony grew up as a smart kid, he already read and counted well. Walking home with his mother from kindergarten, he sounded out loud of all the signs on the buildings. Selena praised the boy. Despite his feisty temper, she loved him dearly. It's all because his father isn't around. The boy definitely needs a man he can trust, Selena thought. Returning from kindergarten, Anthony asked his mother to stop at the playground. She sat down on a bench and waited for the boy to run around, swing on the swings, climb all the structures. They'll sleep better, let him play, Selena thought. Suddenly she heard a woman's voice. Selena, are you there? Her old friend Lucy was standing in front of her. They said you'd gone up north to get married. I, I'm here now, Selena smiled. I'm so happy to see you. What happened to the north? Or are you still married? Selena asked her friend. Divorced, she breathed. A mistake of youth, as they say. Lucy echoed her. Selena laughed. Her friend's serious, sympathetic tone seemed funny for some reason. There she was, my mistake of youth, she pointed with a nod of her head at Anthony, dangling from the bar. Is that your son? Lucy was surprised. He's so big. Yes, he'll be going to school soon. Where's the father? Selena was annoyed and irritated by such questions lately. Well, who cares where her ex-husband is? He's living his life, he's doing well. And why is everyone interested in him and not in her life? Where is where, she mocked Lucy, trying to seem cheerful in Karaganda. She widened her eyes, not understanding the joke. Yes, here he is, we came back together, and then divorced as it happened. Now he has another family. He took a woman with a child and worked at a factory. Does he help you and your son? My friend asked. Yes, he pays alimony, but he does not feel much desire to take Anthony on weekends, Selena continued to tell. His new wife does not welcome it, I would even say, forbids him to meet with his son. Gross. It's okay to get all riled up. Selena pulled her cell phone out of her bag, looked at her watch. We should go, she said, stop by for a visit. She texted her address and sent it to her friend's phone. They said goodbye with a peck on the cheek. Selena called out to Anthony and he surprisingly obediently came running over. They headed home. The next day, the CEO of the company gathered all the staff in the conference room. The staff waited for the CEO to appear. Whispers could be heard in the hall, there had been no general meetings for a long time. No one knew what could be the reason for the gathering. Maybe he would announce a pay raise, suggested the blonde from the sales department. Aha, uh -huh, why you need a raise, argued with her accountant Maria, adjusting her glasses, 
all day long in office's tail twirling. I think he'll announce a layoff, her colleague suggested. I feel like I'm going to be downsized and I'm two years away from retiring. I welcome everyone, said the director, taking his seat at the podium. I have important news for you. A murmur was heard in the hall. The news is important, but the director's face is satisfied. A cheerful smile did not leave. What could it mean? The hall applauded even louder. In recent years, there were almost no parties for employees, as the tradition of organizing corporate parties had quietly become a thing of the past. The last time the staff gathered for a New Year's party was three years ago. And on March 8, women were simply given a bunch of tulips and a box of chocolates. Back at their workplaces, Selena's colleagues could not calm down for a long time. The news excited everyone. And the salary will be increased, and in the restaurant will be able to have fun, and do not have to pay for it. I've got a dress I haven't worn yet, Katie said, touching up her lipstick. I finally had an excuse to wear it. My husband brought it back from a business trip to Europe, and where to go in it, to the store, or what? Selena thought about it, but she had nothing to wear. There was nothing to buy, there was not much money left, she could hardly make it to the paycheck. She decided to call her friend Lucy, in case she could help her. Lucy invited Selena to her house. Come, I have a closet full of rags, we'll find something for you, she said cheerfully and encouragingly. After work, after picking up Anthony from kindergarten, Selena went to visit her friend. On the way she bought some cakes, it was uncomfortable to come empty-handed. The news that they were not going home, but to some aunt's house, and would drink tea and cakes, pleased Anthony. Lucy opened the door and invited the guests into the apartment. Come in, Andres. I'll put the kettle on. Selena and Anthony went into the living room. Lucy's apartment was large. Three rooms, a kitchen, a spacious hallway. It was obvious from the furnishings that the girl was not poor. Expensive furniture, paintings on the walls, a luxurious kitchen set. Let's first see what to pick up, suggested her friend, and then we'll have tea. Anthony walked around the room, looking at beautiful things. Do you have toys? He asked. No, little boy, answered Lucy, squatting down in front of Anthony and taking his hand. We don't have any toys. Why not? Because we have no one to play with them, Lucy replied. She had married a few years ago, but it had not worked out with the children. F honey, I'm home, Selena heard a man's voice. A man entered the kitchen. It was Lucy's husband. The man was dressed in jeans and a gray sweater. Meet, said Lucy. This is my precious husband, Barry. Pleased to meet you. Selena tried to be kind and friendly. Nice to meet you too, Barry replied. Lucy has told me a lot about you. Barry was the owner of a car repair shop. Before he met Olga, he had been fixing cars for a private entrepreneur, but in time he had decided to open his own business. Skills and experience allowed. Barry borrowed money, rented a few boxes on the outskirts. The business quickly took off. Cars always break down and someone has to repair them. The man did not miss out, very easily paid off debts, hired qualified car mechanics. When Barry met Lucy, he was already a successful entrepreneur. To the car service was added a network of car washes, which brought a good income. They had a few more words about nothing. Wife, I'm hungry like a wolf, Lucy's husband said. I'll heat up dinner. I've got everything ready, Selena's friend fussed. Selena, stay with us for dinner. The girl decided that it was not worth abusing her friend's hospitality and refused. Thank you, no, we should probably go home, she said and got up from the table. It was a pleasure to meet you. Lucy packed the dress into a bag and walked Selena and Anthony out. Happy, Selena imagined how gorgeous she would look at the corporate party. She couldn't wait to go out in public in a beautiful dress. Yes, be quiet, said Selena, let me listen. The director read out some figures, talked about the results, talked about plans for the near future and the prospects. And on this occasion, we have decided to give bonuses to some of our employees. I ask you, he passed the microphone to Archie. Dear colleagues, once again I congratulate all of us on a successful contract and the prospects that are opening up. The management has decided to give bonuses to the following employees. He read out the colleagues by name, looking in the folder, and those went out into the hall, received an envelope with money from the hands of the first deputy director. When Selena heard her name, she was greatly surprised. She hesitantly walked towards Archie, smiling confusedly. The bonus had fallen on her unexpectedly, but it had come in handy. Besides, it was always nice to be appreciated by your bosses. Congratulations, Archie said, 
handing Selena the envelope. And now let's move on to the unofficial part, said the CEO. Please, colleagues, help yourselves and have fun. Music was playing in the hall, employees were socializing, eating, drinking. Everyone was in a good mood. The staff had needed a holiday for a long time. Can I invite you? John appeared behind Selena's back. Slow music was playing. Of course, she replied. The man gallantly gave her a hand and led her to the center of the hall. I haven't danced in ages, she said. Neither have I, John smiled back. You look beautiful. This dress suits you very well. I've been admiring it all evening. Selena didn't even realize when he had switched to you when talking to her. John often visited her in the department, but always addressed her formally, calling her by you and patronymic. Thank you, she replied, being carried away by the man's strong arms. And you dance beautifully. Let's you, he suggested. Why this officialism? We are not at work. Let's do it, agreed the girl. How is your son? He asked, apparently to keep the conversation going. Stayed at home with her husband. I'm not married, Selena replied. Divorced, actually. I see the husband is a jerk, she did the hopes of a young and beautiful young lady. No, not a jerk at all. She raised her eyes to John, looked at him carefully. A normal man just met another woman. And you? What about me? She didn't understand the question. Have you met another man since your divorce? No, Selena laughed. I've had my fill of married life so far. She thought she was deceiving this good-looking guy. In fact, Selena wanted to get married, wanted a strong, confident man by her and Anthony's side who could protect them, provide for them, raise their son as his own. When the music died down, John suggested, let's go out on the terrace and get some fresh air. I think it's getting too stuffy in here. Selena agreed. John took two glasses of wine from the waiter's tray and they went outside. The warm breeze fluttered the hem of her dress and the girl's hair was tangled. Selena tried to fix her hair with her hand, but the wind prevented her from doing so. It had long since gotten dark. Cars were passing by. The light of the street lamps created a romantic atmosphere. Will you let me drive you home after the party? John asked. Why not? Selena thought. I'll allow it. As the guests began to leave, John hailed a cab. A yellow car with checkers on the roof pulled up ten minutes later. All this time Selena and John stood at the entrance to the restaurant. No car for a long time, Selena said. And I like it, so I can stay with you longer, John answered unexpectedly. Coming home, the girl turned on the light in the hallway, looked at herself in the mirror. She was young, beautiful. Tonight had removed from her face the traces of fatigue that had accumulated over the past months. The shared fun, the recognition of her colleagues and superiors, the boldness in the envelope she had taken out of her purse, had made her forget all the hardships and difficulties. And then there's John. He has such a warm look in his eyes. I can stay with you longer. She remembered his words and it felt very warm. Selena took a shower and went to bed. She fell asleep feeling happy. During the night, Selena had a nightmare. She tried to move her legs, but they wouldn't move. The girl called out for help, but her voice was stuck inside her, unable to break through. Selena woke up, lay there for a little longer, trying to regain consciousness, got up. She walked to the kitchen, drank a glass of water, and settled back into bed. Her mother had taught her a long time ago, if one had an unpleasant dream, one should say. Where the night goes, the dream goes. Selena did so, and then fell soundly asleep. She opened her eyes when the sun was already shining brightly outside the window. Glancing at the clock, the girl realized it was getting close to dinner time. She stretched in bed, headed for the shower. It was time to go to her parents' house to pick up Anthony. He must have worn out his poor father and mother with his antics by now. There were plenty of empty seats on the trolley bus. People were minding their own business on a Sunday afternoon. There was no hurry. Selena sat at the window, staring blankly at the houses, cars, trees, and people walking along the sidewalk. Mommy, Mommy's here. Anthony shouted, meeting Selena in the hallway. What did you bring me? Selena didn't think at all that it was necessary to run to the store to buy her son some present. She's got the money, but she didn't think about it. I didn't bring anything, Sonny, she said, looking upset. Anthony pouted his lips, offended. But on the way home, you and I will stop by the store and the candy store and get you anything you want. The boy shot at Dore, and Selena's mom shook her head. Where did you get so much money that you decided to pamper your son? She asked her daughter. 
he ropes you, he does not want to consider that you bring him up alone, without support, without help. Nothing, mom, don't worry, we'll manage, she reassured her daughter, he is the only one I have. Selena kissed her son, and he ran to his grandfather's room. The girl went to the kitchen, and I got a bonus, she shared her joy with her mother. Very good, it's high time, she replied, putting the kettle on the stove. You work like an ox, and the salary is so bad. I thought economists earned more when I advised you to enter the institute at the Faculty of Economics. Don't grumble, Ma, I'm fine, we're not starving. Except that you're not. You should look for a normal man. It's not right for a young woman to live alone. I'm not alone, I have Anthony. Selena tried to argue with her mother. Your Anthony knows only the word give. A normal man would quickly teach him to consider the needs of the family. He's just a little boy. Little. His mother poured the tea into cups. You have to educate him from a young age, it will be too late. Selena turned the conversation to another topic. Today she didn't want to argue with her mother, although she knew she was right and said the right things. But where to get this man, they are not lying on the road, and Selena's entrance is not a cue with enviable men. She suddenly remembered John. On the way home with Anthony, they'd stopped at the candy store. The boy was excitedly spinning around the display case with cakes. I want this one, this one, and this one, and this one, he pointed his finger at everything under the glass. Anthony, let's buy one big cake, we don't need so many cakes, Selena persuaded him. No, no, let's get lots of cakes, you promised, the son whimpered, showing his readiness to cry. In the end, Selena talked him into a cake and two kinds of brownies. After some thought, the boy agreed, they bought the chosen sweets and headed towards home. At the driveway Selena was surprised to see John. He was sitting on a bench with a bouquet of flowers in his hands. John, what are you doing here? Asked the girl. Hi, we agreed on you. The young man said hello and corrected Selena. I just wanted to see you. How did you know where I live? Selena asked confused. You forgot, I saw you off yesterday, John reminded her. I remembered the entrance, but I don't know the apartment and there were some grandmothers sitting there. I asked them, and they told me. Yes, our old ladies are a spy's find. They'll tell everyone everything. Selena thought to herself, looking at John and the flowers in his hands. Oh, these are for you. He handed her a bouquet. So, they told me the apartment number. I went upstairs, rang the doorbell, but no one answered. I figured I'd wait here for you. How long have you been waiting? The guy looked at his watch. Two hours. Wow, two hours waiting, not knowing if I'm coming home tonight, the girl thought. She was starting to like this guy more and more. Well, let's go for tea, she suggested. Anthony and I bought the cake. They went up to Selena's apartment. The girl put the flowers in a vase, invited John to the table, where a beautiful cake and cakes were already present. Anthony fidgeted impatiently on a stool. Come on, cakes. Did you wash your hands? Selena asked, trying to sound stern. I did, pour the tea, the boy demanded. Selena poured the tea into cups. John decided to meet the girl's son. Well, Hero, what's your name? He asked. Anthony replied the boy, shoving the cake almost entirely into his mouth. I'm John, the boy replied. Are you going to live with us now? The boy's question made John confused. Why do you think so, Anthony, and in general, do not pester the man, strictly interrupted her son Selena. And here's why. Mickey from my group also had an uncle who went to his mom, and now he picks up Pitya from kindergarten, and he calls him dad. John and Saluna looked at each other and laughed. Eat, cakes, drink tea and go play in your room, the girl told her son. When they were alone in the kitchen, there was an awkward pause. Selena didn't know what to talk to John about, and he too was silent. Finally, the man spoke. Selena, I really like you. Don't push me away right away. Give me a chance to court you. Maybe if you get to know me better, you'll like me too. This news came as a surprise to the girl. Sometimes she imagined the man who would be by her side. In her dreams, it was a strong, confident guy with a good salary and a car, kind and affectionate. But this image seemed so far away. And suddenly such a proposal. Selena lowered her eyes. I realize I'm a stranger to you, John continued. You just give me a chance to prove to you that I'm worthy of you. Selena saw how hard he was struggling with those words. The young man was confused, choosing every word, afraid that she would interrupt him, refuse him, 
drive him away. But she did not interrupt John. She was pleased with everything he was trying to tell her. Selena, let's try to date, the guy suggested nonchalantly. Let's give it a try, the girl agreed. She had been tired of being alone for a long time now. Like any woman, she wanted warmth, attention, affection. Joan smiled. He exhaled with relief when he heard the girl's answer. They sat and talked like good friends for a long time. The guy didn't leave until late in the evening, saying goodbye. Good night, I'll see you tomorrow. When Selena arrived at work the next day, there was a bouquet of roses on her desk. Among the flowers she found a card that read, Good morning, have a good day. The girl's heart beat frantically. It seemed as if it were about to burst out of her chest. She began to realize that John's proposal was not just empty words. He was really determined to win her heart. He seemed to be doing a good job of it. Who are the flowers from? The blonde Katie asked, sticking her nose into the bouquet and inhaling the scent of roses loudly. I don't know, it's not signed, Selena replied. She didn't want to tell her co-worker about her conversation with John. I came in and they were already here on the table. Well, we won't have to guess for long, Katie said with a smart look. The bouquet was from John. What makes you think that? Selena asked. Only a blind man wouldn't notice the way he looks at you, she said, sitting down at her desk and turning on her computer. Besides, you left the restaurant together in a cab last night, I saw. Come on, have you already had something? Usually men give bouquets like that the morning after a wild night out. Stop it, how do you know what kind of bouquets men give? Maria interrupted her. You better get on with your work, you still haven't handed in your reports. Katie shut up resentfully, staring at the monitor. Selena looked at the bouquet, thinking. She was pleased to receive flowers from John. It had been ages and she had received a sign of attention from a man. The next weekend they went to the park for the rides. Anthony was happy. On the way to the park, they all went to Children's World together and his mom bought him a scooter. The boy had wanted one for so long. He rolled merrily down the alley and Selena and John followed leisurely. Ahead was a carousel with horses. The man bought a ticket for Anthony seated him himself and buckled him in so that the child wouldn't fall off. The carousal spun, Selena's son waved, smiled and seemed happy. A mother is happy when her child is happy, Selena thought. Let's live together, John suddenly suggested, without looking at Selena. He was looking at the horses and Anthony passing by. Look how tightly he's holding on to the horse's neck. Selena didn't understand. His proposal sounded so ordinary, so simple and casual. He proposes to her to live together, to become a family, and then he watches Anthony. Usually when men proposed, they made eye contact. At least that's what Selena thought. John turns to her, looking at her carefully. What do you think about that? About the horse? Selena decided to pretend she hadn't heard John's words. About living together, the boy took her hand. Why drag it out when we could be happy now? I agree with you. Let's try, she replied and John put his arm around her waist, pulling her tightly against him. At that moment, she felt the man's warmth and strength at the same time. Selena felt a new stage in her life was beginning. It would be bright, joyful, and peaceful. John moved in with Selena a week after he proposed to her. He didn't have many things. They all fit on two shelves in the closet. Selena was surprised every morning to see another toothbrush and razors in the bathroom. It was strange at first. But soon John became a part of her and Anthony's life. They took their son to kindergarten together, and in the evenings, while the girl cooked dinner, John walked with the boy in the yard. Looking at how they play on the playground, Selena glowed with happiness. Anthony was changing before her eyes. He stopped being capricious, obeyed John, became more sociable and malleable. At work, the girl was also doing well. Career was going uphill. One day, she was summoned to his office by the first deputy general director, Archie. May I, Selena asked, knocking on the door. Yes, come in, the man was sitting at his desk in a leather chair, writing something on a paper. When Selene entered, he looked up. I called you in to talk to you. Have a seat. Selene sat down in the chair. Silently, she looked at the deputy. The thing is, Maria is about to retire. I'd like to offer the position of chief accountant to you. Can you do it? Selena was a little confused. The offer was unexpected. She had heard that her colleague was going to retire, but she hadn't thought it would happen so soon and certainly hadn't expected to take her place. But she liked the deputy's offer. I think I can do it, the girl replied. And I'm sure that you will be able to bring more benefit to the company. 
You are a responsible employee, you know the business well. I looked at your reports. Everything is very well done, no mistakes. Thank you, Selena responded to the praise of the manager. I'm trying. I can see that Archie was quiet for a moment. Tell me, Selena, do you have any personal requests for me? I looked into your file, you're raising a young son on your own. Is there anything we can do to help you? Well, maybe a camp trip for the summer months, find a good school, they'll be going to school soon. Yes, Selena answered, not understanding why she was being so lenient. Maybe you need some medical examination or sanatorium treatment, continued the first deputy. No, thank you, we don't need treatment. Actually, I'm not alone in bringing up my son. Selena decided to tell the head of my personal affairs. I have a man. I'd like a trip to a children's health camp for Misha. I'm happy for you. Congratulations, smiled Archie. I'll take care of the voucher, don't worry. Go and work. In the evening at dinner, John asked, How was your day? Is there anything you want to tell me? About what? Selena didn't understand the question. I was told that you went to the first deputy's office today. You've never been like that before. What were you doing there? He called me in to offer me the position of chief accountant. Maria is retiring, the girl said. John was silent. He had a look of displeasure on his face. Why did he offer you the job? Are there people in the company who have worked much longer than you? Well, I wouldn't know, Selena replied. He offered it, so he thought it was the right thing to do. She didn't understand John's displeasure. It was obvious from his face that he could barely contain his emotions. The man set aside his fork, pushed the empty plate away from him. So, Selena, if I find out you're making eyes at him. The threat made Selena tense. She stretched like a string, staring at John incomprehensibly. For the first time, she felt the subtle threat from the man she decided to commit her life to. I'm not making eyes at anyone. She tried to justify herself. I've said it all. John interrupted her and left the table. Selena washed the dishes and did not understand why she could make the man so angry. After all, she should be happy. She would have a bigger salary. They could sing up for a trip to the sea. When she came to the bedroom, John defiantly turned away, pretended to sleep. The next day, Selena decided to get her nails done. She went to the dressing table in the bedroom, but couldn't find any nail polish. What the hell, the girl thought. She had only recently bought new shades, and there were still plenty of old ones. John, Selena shouted, have you seen where I could have put my nail polishes? I would get a manicure and they're nowhere to be found. I threw them away, she got her husband's reply. Why? Selena didn't understand. Painted nails make a woman look vulgar. Are you crazy or what, thought the girl, but decided not to quarrel. Threw them away and threw them away. She would buy new ones tomorrow when she went home from work. The next day, Selena stood in the office hallway, talking to a supply clerk. She was persuasive but polite, smiling as always as she gave the young die errands and he watched and listened intently. John walked by. He had a business-like look, he didn't even say a word to Selena. She gave him a look and continued her conversation with the supply clerk. At the end of the day, Selena looked into her husband's office. Will you pick up Anthony from daycare? She asked. I want to go to the hairdresser to get a new haircut. Without lifting his head from the papers on the desk, John mumbled. I'll get it. Selena came back from the hairdressers in a great mood. The new hairstyle suited her well. How do you like my new look? She smiled at John. Great, he said without showing any emotion. Before going to bed, the girl went to the bathroom. She was surprised to find that there was no shampoo or body gel on the shelf. Gone were the scented oils and creams she used all the time. Did you throw away all my tubes? She asked John. Yes, I did, he replied icily. Is something wrong? Of course it's wrong, Selena boiled. What right do you have to throw away my things? Don't you think you're getting a little too nafu for Rivetsia and twirling tail in front of men? John got up from the couch and threateningly hovered over the girl. I'm not faffing. Selena tried to justify herself, but at the same moment she was hit in the face. It was so strong that she staggered backwards, barely able to stay on her feet. I won't let you be with other men, the man hissed angrily through his teeth. Going to bed, Selena couldn't come back from the shock. No one had ever hit her. She had trusted this guy, let him into her home, into her life, and he was allowing himself to do this. John turned to her, put his arms around her, started kissing her neck softly. Selena didn't move. It was like she was petrified. 
Well, I'm sorry, I was out of my mind with jealousy when I saw you in the office hallway with that smut, John pleaded. That night they had crazy sex. In the morning, Selena covered the bruise with foundation and they went to work together, dropping Anthony off at daycare. After work, Selena stopped by to visit Lucy. She needed to tell someone about what happened. Did he let himself raise his hand to you? Her friend was indignant. Selena, whatever you want to think, it's not normal. I understand, but he apologized. When Selena left, Lucy's husband, who had heard the conversation, said, Why did he offer you the job? Are there people in the company who have worked much longer than you? Well, I wouldn't know, Selena replied. He offered it, so he thought it was the right thing to do. She didn't understand John's displeasure. It was obvious from his face that he could barely contain his emotions. The man set aside his fork, pushed the empty plate away from him. So, Selena, if I find out you're making eyes at him. The threat made Selena tense. She stretched like a string, staring at John incomprehensibly. For the first time, she felt the subtle threat from the man she decided to commit her life to. I'm not making eyes at anyone. She tried to justify herself. I've said it all, John interrupted her and left the table. Selena washed the dishes and did not understand why she could make the man so angry. After all, she should be happy. She would have a bigger salary that could sing up for a trip to the sea. When she came to the bedroom, John defiantly turned away, pretended to sleep. The next day, Selena decided to get her nails done. She went to the dressing table in the bedroom, but couldn't find any nail polish. What the hell, the girl thought. She had only recently bought new shades, and there were still plenty of old ones. John, Selena shouted, have you seen where I could have put my nail polishes? I would get a manicure and they're nowhere to be found. I threw them away, she got her husband's reply. Why? Selena didn't understand. Painted nails make a woman look vulgar. Are you crazy or what, thought the girl, but decided not to quarrel. Threw them away and threw them away. She would buy new ones tomorrow when she went home from work. The next day, Selena stood in the office hallway, talking to a supply clerk. She was persuasive but polite, smiling as always as she gave the young die errands and he watched and listened intently. John walked by. He had a business-like look, he didn't even say a word to Selena. She gave him a look and continued her conversation with the supply clerk. At the end of the day, Selena looked into her husband's office. Will you pick up Anthony from daycare? She asked. I want to go to the hairdresser to get a new haircut. Without lifting his head from the papers on the desk, John mumbled. I'll get it. Selena came back from the hairdressers in a great mood. The new hairstyle suited her well. How do you like my new look? She smiled at John. Great, he said without showing any emotion. Before going to bed, the girl went to the bathroom. She was surprised to find that there was no shampoo or body gel on the shelf. Gone were the scented oils and creams she used all the time. Did you throw away all my tubes? She asked John. Yes, I did, he replied icily. Is something wrong? Of course it's wrong, Selena boiled. What right do you have to throw away my things? Don't you think you're getting a little too nafu for Rivetsia and twirling tail in front of men? John got up from the couch and threateningly hovered over the girl. I'm not faffing. Selena tried to justify herself, but at the same moment she was hit in the face. It was so strong that she staggered backwards, barely able to stay on her feet. I won't let you be with other men, the man hissed angrily through his teeth. Going to bed, Selena couldn't come back from the shock. No one had ever hit her. She had trusted this guy, let him into her home, into her life, and he was allowing himself to do this. John turned to her, put his arms around her, started kissing her neck softly. Selena didn't move. It was like she was petrified. Well, I'm sorry, I was out of my mind with jealousy when I saw you in the office hallway with that smut, John pleaded. That night they had crazy sex. In the morning, Selena covered the bruise with foundation and they went to work together, dropping Anthony off at daycare. After work, Selena stopped by to visit Lucy. She needed to tell someone about what happened. Did he let himself raise his hand to you? Her friend was indignant. Selena, whatever you want to think, it's not normal. I understand, but he apologized. When Selena left, Lucy's husband, who had heard the conversation, said, It's Selena's fault. It takes a lot of effort to make a man mad, and you should cut off all contact with her. It's not going to do you any good. On Mondays, there was a meeting in the office. At a large table in the office of the general director gathered all the deputies, 
heads of departments, some of the specialists. Selena was also present. She now held the position of chief accountant. The meeting went on as usual. Having discussed the key points and current tasks, the employees went to their offices. In the evening at home, John beat Selena badly. Crouching, curled up in a ball, she lay on the floor and felt the blows hitting her body. You'll know how to stare at other men, John said as he beat the girl. She couldn't go to work the next day. Selena called Archie and said she needed to stay home for a few days. She was sick. Her whole body ached with pain. Selena didn't understand what was happening to her husband. A day later, the beatings were repeated. Not knowing what to do, where to find answers to her questions, she went to church. Batushka is a wise man. He will tell you what to do, she thought, walking down the church alley to the temple, overcoming the pain in her whole body. After listening to the girl, the priest said, I'm sure your husband didn't mean to hurt you. He was just confused. You must be more tolerant, help him to find the true path. Forgive him as God forgives us our trespasses. Selena was not a stupid girl. When she returned home, she realized that you can forgive everything, but you can't understand. She had heard stories about domestic tyrants, but she couldn't imagine that it could happen to her. Getting off the trolley bus, she slowly walked through the yards to her house. On the way she saw a police station and decided to go to the district police officer and talk to him. My husband is beating me, she told the man in uniform. Why? He asked her, twirling a ballpoint pen in his hands. I don't know, I don't do anything like that, probably out of jealousy. There is no such thing as jealousy, dearie. The precinct officer's snide tone caused Selena a storm of indignation. What if he hurts me? I have a young son. Everyone has children, but not all wives are beaten, the police officer concluded. So you've done something to anger your husband, think about it carefully. But Selena decided not to give up. Her health, and maybe even her life, was at stake. By law, you must take action. Respond to the complaint and give me an answer about the preventive work done, she said in a firm voice. Oh, but don't tell me what I should do, waved his hands at her. Everyone has become so smart. He remained silent for a while, then said in a peaceful tone. Okay, go, I'll talk to your husband. That Sunday morning John, Salima and Anthony went to the town square where buses of children were leaving for the health camps. The square was crowded with parents and children in brightly colored summer clothes. Third squad, line up by the bus. She heard a woman's voice calling her. Let's go quickly, Selena hurried John and Anthony. This is our squad and our bus. She fixed a cap on her son's head, gave him a sports bag with a change of clothes and hygiene supplies. Behave yourself, obey the counselors, she admonished her son, and John and I will come to you soon. The boy nodded. The children started to get on the buses. Selena rushed to the driver. My son, she pointed at Anthony, might get nauseous on transportation. Please, if he feels unwell, stop. Let him get some fresh air. The driver smiled. What a caring mom. Don't worry, sweet girl, he said. There's a teacher and a medic on every bus. If something happens to the child, they will be there to help. Anthony took his seat by the window, waving cheerfully to his mother. She, smiling, waved back. The buses moved off one after another, and John and Selena headed home. In the evening, John beat Selena badly again. This time it was her fault for daring to strike up a conversation with a bus driver she didn't know. Barely getting up off the floor when John left, slamming the front door, she dialed 02 on her phone. I've been beaten up by my husband, she said faintly into the receiver of the phone. Give me the address, she heard the answer. Selena dictated. She collapsed on the couch, waiting for help from the law enforcement officers. John began to overstep every possible boundary of sanity. He kicked her legs across her face, her chest, her stomach. The girl's face and body were bruised and bloody. But now the police would arrive. She would file a report. He would be found and arrested. Selena fell into a painful oblivion, and after a while she heard a phone call. She looked around. There was no one in the apartment. The girl looked at her watch. Since her call to the police, three hours had passed. She slowly picked up the phone. Hello, do you think that everything that has happened is my fault? Yes, maybe I overreacted, but I love you, I don't need anyone else, and you're always attracting the attention of other men. The man's tone began to take on an aggressive tone. Selena shrank back, sensing danger. There's no one around if something happens, she won't be able to call for help. Why don't you say something, John demanded, or do you think I've repented, 
that I'll turn a blind eye to the way you flirt with other men. Here we go, the girl thought fearfully. Suddenly John jumped up, grabbed her by her loose hair, dragged her into the woods. Her husband tied Selena to a large tree with a rope. As he did so, he kept saying, now you will realize how much it hurts me when everyone stares at you when they look at you. It is for them that you put on your makeup every day, for them you put a whole layer of plaster on your face. Tell me. Answer me. But Selena was as if numb, her tongue could not move, a lump rose in her throat. John turned away, went to the car. He took a tire iron out of the trunk, returned to Selena tied to the tree. Everything that happened next was an unspeakable nightmare. The man was beating the girl with the heavy iron. It seemed that he was not even in control of himself. The tire came down on her face, then on her head. The girl felt the blows all over her body. At this moment she prayed to God only one thing, that she would lose consciousness and feel nothing. How much time passed, Selena didn't realize. Suddenly the blow stopped. John stepped back, threw the iron into the grass, and sat down on the plate. He poured himself some wine then poured some into Selena's glass. He brought the glass to the girl's face and began to pour the wine into her mouth. The liquid poured past her, seeping under her t-shirt. What? John yelled suddenly, his eyes flashing with fury. You don't like my wine? Or maybe you don't like me either? You're a slutty woman. You should be taught proper behavior every day. I'm the man in this family, I'm in charge. You shouldn't talk to anyone but me, but you're always looking at the side. Tears suddenly sprang from his eyes. John knelt down. You'll forgive me, won't you, love? He asked, sobbing. Selena looked hatefully at the man she had led into her life, the man she had trusted with her and her child. Catching her gaze, John rasped again. He found a tire iron in the grass and walked over to Selena tied to a tree. The man kicked her legs, hitting her knees, calves, shins with force. Selene could hear her bones crunching. She was no longer standing on the grass, but hanging, supported by a thick rope. She saw everything, understood everything. Consciousness did not want to leave her brain, but she could not feel her legs. They were numb. It was getting dark. John untied Selena, and she collapsed to the ground. He picked her up in his arms, carried her to the car and put her in the back seat. Getting into the driver's seat, he turned the ignition key and the car started. How did you like our picnic, darling? He asked the girl looking at her through the rearview mirror. Did we have a wonderful vacation? You can't imagine what adrenaline it is. My blood was just boiling. He said something else, his eyes flashing frantically, but Selena passed out. Selena and John got home after dark. The yard was empty. The man picked up his wife and carried her into the apartment, laying her on the couch. That's it, sweetheart, the man said, leaning over her. Who needs you now, a cripple, and even with your childish bastard, You'll be mine now. I don't think any man would want to go to bed with a cripple. No one needs you but me. In the morning the phone rang in Archie's waiting room. The secretary Catherine picked up the receiver. There was an excited female voice. Katenka, hello, this is Maria. Your former chief accountant hurriedly spoke the voice in the receiver. Yes, Maria, answered the receptionist. I recognize you. Go ahead. Please connect me with Sergei Vitalievich. It's very important. Maria? Don't put the phone down, I'll ask if he can talk to you, just a moment. After a while Ekaterina put Maria through to the CEO. Archie had been in the position for two weeks. You see Archie, I was sick, so I went to the clinic to see the doctor. And in the hallway I saw our Selena, you know, the one you hired to take my place. I don't understand you, replied the woman's former boss in a polite tone. Speak more clearly please. Well, I saw her, she was in a terrible state, Selena's face was devastated. I think her husband is beating her. That's odd, Archie replied to the pensioner. She hasn't shown up for work in two weeks, she said she was sick. Okay, Maria, I'll take care of it. Catherine, he shouted. The girl entered the office. Tell me, John has already come to work. Yes, he is in place, replied the secretary. Shall I invite him in? No, no me go. In a second, he was already dialing the number of the head of the service without danger. Fifteen minutes later, law enforcement and paramedics were at Selena's apartment. You are charged with causing grievous bodily harm to a person and possibly attempted murder, the police officer told John as he entered the first deputy's office. The man was handcuffed. But now no one will need her. Those were the last words Archie heard from his colleague.
Thank you for watching this video to the end. Subscribe to the channel. Like it, write comments if you like the story. And see you on the channel.